Yes. Oh. Philip Kwan, you were expecting me? Oh, yes, of course. Mr. Kwan, please come in. Thank you. Mr. Kwan, you come with the highest of recommendations. What is it I can do for you? Six well endowed. For how long? The entire week. Well, Mr. Kwan, you must understand, these are exceptional girls. Aside from great beauty, they have breeding, poise, they are they're resourceful, inventive, and very accommodating. How much? $2,000 a night per girl, half of it now, and the rest when the engagement is complete. Then we have a deal. You supply me six call girls for $60,000. Gratuities are not included, and cash only, of course. Of course. More tea. I'm not expecting anyone. It's okay. I am. Did you get it? Every word. Aside from great beauty, they have You great have a lovely voice. speaking voice, Clara. Very refined. I'm sure the jury will enjoy listening to it. Jeffrey Wong, SFPD Vice, my partner, Inspector Weber. Clara Hauser, you're under arrest for pandering. You son of a bitch! I shot. Bastard. You don't want to take the fall all alone, do you, Clara? We know you work for Billy Sullivan. Roll on him and you'll probably walk with just a fine. Catch any bad guys? A couple. How about you? I got a guy holding a bus full of orphans hostage. I shot him and two of his henchmen right between the eyes. Hmm. All work. Done. Hmm. Get any gunplay today? A couple of fast draws. One and both. Where's your dad? Yes. Not too late tonight, okay? Sure, Mom. I just want to get my body count up to 100. Just. Not too late. Hey, sexy. Oh. Hey. It's one hell of a day you put in, Inspector. How can I say? Vice is my life. Maybe some lasagna left. You want me to eat it? I picked up a taco on the way home. That feels good. Massage. Mm. Back seat. <laughs> On feet. How about a rain check? Yeah. Why not? You dry around these parts anyway lately. I'm sorry. I'm I'm just tired. I put in a long day. Hey, what do you think I do? Just sit around playing with my tools? Steven. Hey, I am trying to understand. You got a tough job. I get it. I mean, you're pushing me over the edge. Because I'm too tired to have sex? When was the last time, Phil? Or doesn't your calendar go back that far? Well, what do you want me to do? Just lay back and take it for old glory? Old glory's not the one that needs a cold shower. Hey. We'll make a play date, OK? I'm just sit in the side, wrap up this case, we can make a reservation. Can there'll be another case, and another case. Let's forget it, Phil. Let's just forget it.
Congratulations. Just won the lottery. 56 million. Did you say something? Not me. Quiet as a mouse. I wouldn't want to disturb your reverie. My reverie? How long have we been partners? I don't know. Uh, going on four years. Four years, two weeks and a day. What's your point? Doesn't that entitle me? Entitle you to what? To share whatever's bugging you? That obvious, huh? A trained investigator, Phil. School to flush out a person's innermost thoughts. Besides, you haven't said a word since we left precinct. It's just the usual. Bills, mortgage payments, credit cards maxed to the limit. Oh, do you see what I see? Lester Neal. On the Sullivan's bag, man, I'd love to see what's in that case. You got a probable cause in your pocket? Let's just follow him. Why waste the gas? He's gonna deliver the tape to Sullivan. Then let's go kick some Irish ass. Isn't that harassment? Only if he flinches. How come the bad guys always got better wheels than we do? Because they make more money. Get that off the table. Parker's light. What is it this time? Same old, same old. The ring kept the Johns inside. A couple of the girls got a cold. Yada, yada, yada. I'll take care of it. What's your hurry, Lester? No time for a leisurely lunch? Or doesn't the boss like you eating with him? Do you know what I like about places like this, Detective Weber? People like you can't afford them. Oops. Sorry about the bust. But we did put in a lot of time and effort. It took me six months to work that cover. You're sailing right over my head. Clara Hauser. Never heard of her. She's still in lockup. She's gonna be there a while, too. Well, something happened to her paperwork. I hope that doesn't inconvenience you, Billy. I haven't missed a trick, to coin a phrase. And this, uh, whoever she is, I'm sure she'll check her references more carefully next time. There won't be a next time. You're pathetic, Wimper. You've been trying to shut me down for how long now? Long enough. We're almost at the finish line. You're not even out of the starting gate. Now get the hell out of here. You're giving me indigestion. Let me ask you something, Billy. Your bookmakers, your prostitutes, they're probably pretty well compensated for their time, right? What about your massage parlors? You know, the ones with the 14-year-old Vietnamese girls? Do you pay minimum wage for all those massages? You're delusional, Detective Weber. I'm in the clothing business. In fact, why don't you, uh, come by one of my stores sometime? Pick up something nice for your husband. What makes you think I'm married? Because I make a point to know about everyone who's trying to screw me. We got everything. We got Armani, Hugo Boss, Prada, anything you want. 30%. You know what? For you, 40% off. Thanks. Bon appetit. Margaret, got a minute? Sure. No potential suicides, no brushes with the bottle, no punching out the wife. So far, it's been an easy day. Maybe you're just that good a shrink. Oh, 
I don't know. I'm supposed to rub magic dust on the wounded psyches around here and send them back to the jungle. Sometimes I feel like I'm just putting crazy glue on the San Andreas fault. <laughs> so, what's going on? Oh, you know, Steve and I... Another fight? Oh, we didn't even get that far. It's just the same old thing. He thinks your job is more important to you than he is? Yeah. I've been trying to nail this Sullivan creep, and I've been putting in a lot of long hours. And he's pissed. Royally. Can you blame him? Hey, you're supposed to be my friend here. Phyllis, how do you expect him to feel? He's a man. They're like avocados. They bruise easily. <laughs> well, what am I supposed to do? Well, are you asking as a friend, or do you want my professional advice? I got something in the middle. Well, this isn't new, is it? I mean, before the Sullivan case, it was the Carter case. And the Harrington case before that? There's always going to be some case. Maybe you should ask yourself something. What? Um, like maybe Steve is right? Maybe you do love your job more than him. Oh, next. What have we got? Claire's little black book. Yeah. Take a peek. Anything connecting her to Sullivan? So far. The John's names are in some sort of a code, but there's a whole bunch of numbers next to them. Thank you. That's all I seem to do here. Sit. You want out, Clara? Well, now, what do you think, dear? Answer a simple question, and your paperwork will magically appear. Don't worry, the mic's off. It's just you and me. And what is it you want to know, dear? I came across a number in your book. Whatever you say will go no further. And what significance does this number have to you? Tell me. <laughs> you know, I've been in this business a long time. And if it's taught me one thing, it's how to read people. How to ferret out their dirty little secrets. I just want an answer, Clara. I'm getting to that, dear. <laughs> I'm certainly very interested in this telephone number. Kind of edgy about it. <laughs> Must be terribly personal. A friend. Partner? Perhaps a husband? <laughs> oh. I find men to be like rutting pigs, don't you? It's 
been a client for over a year. I'm sorry, dear. I truly am sorry. Did you pull up? What are you standing there for? So, uh, you hungry? I was gonna call for a pizza or something. We had an interesting bust. Yeah? Well, let me make a drink and you can tell me all about it. You want anything? Uh-uh. We took down a very well-connected madam. Clara Hauser. She had this book, you know, with the names of her clients. Your cell phone number was in it. Well, that's ridiculous. It was me, Stephen. On the phone. I got the number right out of her book. It's a mistake. I mean, it's probably a transposed number or something. Don't insult my intelligence. I question lying scuzzbags for a living, and you're not very good at it. Only happened a couple of times. I know, a couple of times. It sounds really good. Uh, guys from sales took me down there. It was more like a, a more like a dare than anything else. Hauser says you've been a client for over a year. Why, Stephen? You weren't getting it at home, so you thought you'd just hire a prostitute? Phyllis, that's not it. Is that what our marriage is based on, sex? No, it's not just the sex. Then what is it? Everything. It's everything. I mean, you know, we go through the motions like, like we're married, but we don't talk about anything. You did a pretty good job of it last night. And what good did it do? You're still never here. It's my job, Stephen. No, it's your life, Phyllis. It's what you live for. Now, it takes two to make a marriage, and lately, I'm the only one that's working on it. Oh, yeah, you're working real hard, getting happy with hookers. I am not proud of that. Did you even use condoms? Yes, I did. Why didn't you try to work it out with me? I didn't think that you'd want to change. You like your life the way it is. I think you'd be happy just going along the way it is. But not me. I want something more. I want something more out of it. Well, we should go to counseling. Yeah. I think we did that already. But as I recall your caseload, I think you managed to make it to one session. One. Then what's the answer, Stephen? What is the answer? Just 15 years of marriage, out the window, into the gutter, is that what you want? Is that what you want? Get out! Yes. Get yes. out!
honey. I brought home dinner, so go wash up before it gets any colder. Sean? Sean, I'm talking to you. Sorry. Guess I didn't hear you. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Something. Why'd you throw Dad out of the house? He told you that? You tell me. Sean. Yeah, that's what I thought. Wait. Sometimes people just drift apart. And that's what happened to you and Dad? Not all at once. It kind of sneaks up on you. Till one day, everything's changed. I don't get it. What? You two don't fight. We do it when you're not around. Sean, your dad and I, we're gonna try to work this out. Yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah. Phyllis? Phyllis Weber? Yeah. You've been served. Eddie, take it easy. You drop that thing and blow your head off. Sorry, Mr. Weber. Yeah, well, pay attention to what you're doing. Steven. What are you doing here? This. This is what I'm doing here. Yeah, well, now's not the time or the place. You're suing me for divorce? Phyllis. Is this why you wouldn't see me, Stephen? Talk about the problem? Take a break. This is no spur of the moment decision. How long have you been planning Sonia it? Diakini. And you want custody of Sean? Are you insane? He needs a full-time parent, Phyllis. Not someone who's out all hours of the day and night. He needs a balanced, stable life. He needs his mother. When? The few hours you decide to come home? No, he needs a parent, and right now, that's me. You think about it, Phyllis, and you'll agree. I'm not agreeing to anything. He's going through a lot of changes, and having an absentee parent is not making it any better. He needs a support system. Oh, what's yours? The hookers you've been screwing? My mother, my parents, for one. Now, look, I got a full-time job, nine to five, I'm off on the weekends. I could be there in the morning to see him off to school and home to make dinner. Don't fight me on this, Phyllis. Please. I am only thinking about what's best for Sean. He's my son, Stephen. And I'm not gonna let you take him from me without a fight. Well, you better get yourself a good lawyer. Thanks for lunch. Well, you could have saved the price of yours. You didn't touch it. I'm trying to drop a few pounds so I look good in court. <laughs> How's that going? I gotta get a lawyer. Stephen has money, doesn't he? His parents do. He manages a chain of dry cleaners for them. Well, if he's as determined as you say, he'll paper you to death. What does that mean? Motions, depositions, ex parte hearings. After a while, you won't know which end is up. You will have spent every cent you have and gotten exactly nowhere. My ex dragged me through every legal mud hole for eight months until I was exhausted and flat broke. Stephen will do the same on mommy and daddy's dime. What do I do? <laughs> you get yourself a good lawyer, kid. Oh, yeah. It's a difficult case, but, uh... Not impossible. While you have a somewhat dangerous occupation and are given to 
erratic hours and possible life-threatening situations, you're still the mother. And his age of 13 is a real plus. How so? Well, if he were younger, say five or six, um, his wishes would be discounted. But a teenager's desires uh, carry great weight. I assume he wants to live with you? I haven't asked him. Well, that's the first item of business, then. We'll have him make a statement to that effect. We'll submit it to the court, and then with a little luck and a sympathetic judge, we may not have to go to trial on that issue. Thank you, Mr. Grossman. You've made me feel a whole lot better about all of this. Well, that's what I'm here for. Um, now these things can get nasty if we let them. The trick, like a good bar fight, is to end it quickly. As we lawyers say, stop the bleeding, both financial and emotional. Now, if you will give my assistant a check, we can get started. Of course. How much? Uh, that's $20,000 retainer and $600 per hour after that. 20 Thousand? Is there a problem with that? Uh, it's a little out of my league, Mr. Grossman. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. That's that's my standard fee. I had no idea. Well, this is awkward for both of us. Um, when you said Dr. Nathanson referred you to me, I thought you understood the fee structure. She said it was a $5,000 retainer and $200 an hour. Oh. Well, her divorce was quite some time ago. I have $6,000 in the bank. I could give you all of it. I'm sorry. I can't alter my fee structure. I, it wouldn't be fair to my other clients. No, uh, of course not. I, I understand. Well, I... Uh, I won't bill you for this little visit. The best of luck. Thank you. What? What's going on? Yeah. Your husband subpoenaed everyone in the squad. What? That's crazy. You guys have nothing to do with this. Well, I read it as pressure. So you'll settle, or we'll all have to give up our day off to answer the deposition. Uh, Pete, you in this thing, Phil? I'm trying, Jeff. I'm really trying. Hey, guys! I'm really sorry about this. I, I had nothing to do with it. I promise I'm gonna I'm gonna try to work it out. Sean? Yeah? Question. If it comes down to it, who would you rather live with? Your father or me? Why do I have to choose? The judge is going to ask you, so you should consider your answer. I thought you said you and Dad were going to work things out. I tried. He wasn't interested. How hard? What? How hard did you try? Sean, this is not all my fault. Dad's living out of a suitcase in some hotel. That was his choice. You told him to get out, didn't you? In a moment of anger. Well, he's not back, so I guess you still must be angry. <sighs> Hello? Uh, Mrs. Weber, this is Ira Grossman. Oh, Mr. Grossman. Have you reconsidered? I'm afraid not. Uh, has the court clerk contacted you? Uh, no. Well, that happens sometimes. The system's running on overload. Things get put off, then forgotten. 
Why? What is it? Well, I was at the courthouse today, and I saw your name listed for an ex parte hearing tomorrow at 8 a.m. This is my first divorce. I'm not up to speed on all the terms. What exactly is an ex parte hearing? Uh, it's a motion seeking temporary relief on some part of the case. In divorce proceedings, it's usually spousal support or child custody. And since notification always goes to the attorney of record, and since you don't have one, I wanted to make sure you knew about it. And uh, now I'm glad I called. Yes, thank you. Your Honor, we've given the respondent 15 extra minutes. I move we proceed with the ex parte hearing. Well, I'm inclined to agree with you, Counselor. Your Honor, my client, Stephen Weber, moves that we take... Sorry, I'm late. I had to get my son off to school. Mrs. Weber? Yes, Your Honor, here. Ah, well, there's a motion before the court. Your husband is seeking temporary custody of the minor child, uh, Sean Weber. Now, do you have counsel, Mrs. Weber? Not at the moment. Then I take it you're representing yourself? Looks that way. Ah. Well, I hope you're familiar with the adage that the lawyer who represents himself has a fool for a client. I wish I could argue with you. Your Honor, may I approach? I'm representing Mrs. Weber. Hi. As to the motion before the court, we feel that it is entirely precipitous. Why not resolve these issues at trial rather than hacking them up piecemeal? I'm sure the court has better things to do with its time than hear a flurry of motions when one brief hearing can settle everything. Your Honor. You make great sense, Mr. Bannister, but then you always do. All right. This motion is now bound over for trial. Take a walk. Okay, who are you, and what's the catch? No catch. Uh, from the cut of your suit, I can't afford your tailor bills, much less your fees. Mrs. So... Weber, my firm often does pro bono work. Ira Grossman told me about your case and your financial problems. Uh, I think your husband's trying to buy your son, and frankly, we at Wheelock Bannister don't like that sort of thing. I'll say it again. I don't got no money. But you have integrity and a will to fight, and that's good enough for me. Are you serious? What's the expression? As a heart attack? All right, Arthur Bannister of Wheelock Bannister. You got yourself a client. Good. Your husband's tax returns say he makes 60,000 a year. Where is he getting the money to pay his lawyer and file all these motions? Our forensic accountants are tearing their hair out. They can't find where he's hiding his money. His parents, they're loaded. Well, we've got a problem, Phyllis. My partners are pressuring me to drop the case. You can't. I don't want to. But the bills are rolling in, and we haven't even gotten to the custody issue yet. Please. You know, if we could just throw them a bone, it might mollify them. What sort of bone? Well, this is awkward, so please just bear with me here. There's rumor that a client of the firm's, a very important client, might be indicted for money laundering. The charges are groundless, of course. But if we knew when the indictment was coming down, it would go a long way in giving the firm a leg up and preparing his defense and incidentally winning my partner's continued enthusiasm for your case. Think about it. If it makes you uncomfortable, believe me, I'll understand. Stay long. Oh, Sean's home by himself. One drink. 
So what did you want to talk to me about? Look, listen, Phil, I, I know what you're going through with this divorce, and I want you to know I'm here for you no matter how it spins out. I know, Jack. The thing is, you haven't been there. I mean, out there on the street, I, you're away somewhere. Jeff, I may lose my son. I understand that. But a partner has to rely on his partner. Thanks, yeah, I appreciate that. Something else going on? Something besides the divorce? What are you talking about? Ride with somebody for a while, you get to reading their body language. And what's mine say? Guilty? Of what? I don't know. Give it a rest, Jeff. I'm sure your junior G-man badge is in the mail. Thanks for the beer. This is Weber and Vice, badge 7399. You have an impending indictment, Salvatore D'Amico, DAM, ICO. When will the warrant be issued? doesn't know where comedy sports all his records on the premises and we got a no-knock warrant. Boston and Myers, you go first. Juan and Weber back up. Kellogg and I cover the other exit. Let's do it. some research on Salvador D'Amico. He has bank accounts in the Caymans and Bermuda, where he's probably lying on the beach right now. Oh, yeah, and guess who leased him that office space? Integrated Resources, Billy Sullivan's dummy corporation. You just climbed in bed with garbage, partner. You're beginning to reek. but you don't have any assets, well, then you'd better hide them before they subpoena your records. You hid a girlfriend for six years. A couple million should be a breeze. Uh, you're interrupting an attorney-client convert. You used me to warn D'Amico so he could cut and run. That makes you indignant. Why? I could lose my career if it got out. I won't tell if you won't. My partner already suspects what I did. Can he prove it? I don't know. We'll find out. <sighs> Let's get a few things clear, Inspector. Billy Sullivan pays this firm a six-figure retainer. He is also subsidizing your divorce trial. And in return, he expects certain favors. The D'Amico thing was the first, but definitely not the last. The sooner you wrap your mind around that fact, the happier, more productive you'll be. Now, if you'll excuse me, I do have other clients.
Over here. Is everything okay, Mr. Sullivan? I tried to stop her. Yeah, it's fine. It's my old prom date. Close the door. You're angry. What do you want? What do I want? Jeez. Want to uh, lose a few pounds, win the World Series of Poker, screw J-Lo. Listen, you pig. But I'll settle for your ass. Not available. Think again. When you tipped us off about the D'Amico indictment, you jumped right into my pocket, which is where you will stay until I decide to let you out. I had no idea that you were involved. Would it have made a difference? Count on it. Forget your career. Think of Sean. How do you think the judge will react when he finds out you got booted off the force for passing on confidential information? You think he'll see you as the ideal parent for your son? You. Ah, save it, honey. I've been called a lot worse by a lot better. You're just one in a long line of corrupt cops. Learn to embrace that. You asked me what I wanted? Here it is. I want a crystal ball on the vice squad. I want to know about warrants coming down, raids taking place, snitches about to roll over. For that, you'll be able to fight your husband in court. And who knows? You wear a short skirt and bat your eyes, you might even win. Sean? Yeah? Where are you going? To see my dad. It's after 10. I won't be late. It's a school night. Mom, my homework's done. Well, that's not the point. Get off my case, OK? I want to see my father.
What's so important we couldn't do this over the phone? Phones have ears. You found the bug. There could be more. Not that I know of. Well, maybe they don't tell you everything. What do you want? Hey, what's with that husband of yours, huh? This custody thing's taking longer than my, uh... <laughs> it's taking a long time. His parents have deep pockets. You want me to keep paying your lawyers? I'm gonna need a little more out of you. You're getting your money's worth. Someone tried to rip off one of my collectors. He's in the hospital. So, send him some flowers. I need a new one. No one's gonna try to rip off a cop. You got a pair, Billy. I'll give you that. Or maybe I'll have your old man knocked off. That'd end the trial in a hurry, wouldn't it? That grin better mean you're joking, because if I thought you were serious... I just raised the stakes, honey. It's your turn to Annie up. Come in, dear. <laughs> my, my, look at us. A couple of bad girls. <laughs> now, would you like me to pour you some tea, or would you like something a little more bracing? Give. Of course. Now, you tell Billy business was brisk. <laughs> tell him yourself. I'm not the singing telegram girl. Oh, my, my, haven't we become testy now that we've crossed the line? Is it a guilty conscience, dear? Now, come on, Inspector, what's your hurry? Don't you want to hang out, talk shop, reminisce about the good old days when you tried to take me downtown and put me in handcuffs? <laughs> I'm glad you're getting off on this, Clara. But it's not rocking my boat. No, dear? Next week. <laughs> What's up? Oh, just some files I have to finish. And you're not the only one with homework, you know. What's the smell? Go take a peek on the stove. Is this spaghetti sauce? Did you make this, like, yourself? No. A leprechaun snuck in while I was at work. Go look under your bed. There might be a pot of gold. This is the first of many mother-son home-cooked meals. Sweet. Mom, can I ask you a question? Sure. It's kind of a funny question, but Dad asked me. Okay. He was wondering where you're getting the money to pay for your lawyers. He said they run like $500 an hour. I took out a loan, but you don't have to tell your dad that. I won't. Mom? Yeah? I'm sorry. For acting like a jerk. I know this is an easy time for you, and I'm not helping any. I just want you to know I'll get my act together. I love you. Me too. I'm gonna go do my homework. Call me when dinner's mm -hmm. ready.
You look like crap. That's an improvement. You're talking to me. It's taking its toll. What's that? Whatever it is you're doing for something. That's why you look this way. It's eating you alive. Jeff. Bug in Sullivan's office hasn't picked up anything. It's almost like he knows it's there. Phil. You're a good cop. Don't throw that away for some creep like Sullivan. Whatever he's paying you, it isn't worth sinking your career. Have you talked to Dietrich about this? No. I'm still thinking about it, though. But if you quit Sullivan right now, cold turkey, I'll develop a raging case of amnesia. It'll be over soon. Just have to get through the custody hearing. Then I'll quit. Cold turkey. Hope it isn't too late by then. Do that again. I have another job for you. I'm all booked up. I want you to take someone out. <laughs> Draymon. Your partner. What about him? He's been following you. How do you know that? We've been keeping an eye on you. I have my sources. <sighs> What's the matter, Billy? You don't trust me? No, Phyllis. As a matter of fact, I don't trust you. You could be setting me up for a bust. You could be wearing a wire. You want to pat me down? Give me a strip search? I wouldn't mind a little of both. You're the one who set me up, Billy. Don't you remember? If you didn't think you could trust me, why'd you do it? Because I know, deep down, underneath all the cop stuff, that you really, really hate me. And I love a challenge. You know the most incredible thing about you? What's that? The way you're able to walk on your hind legs all by yourself. If Wong becomes a problem, you're gonna have to take him out. Do you understand me? Don't worry about Jeff. He has no idea what's going on. Maybe, maybe not. But I'd keep an eye on my rearview mirror if I were you. Because I wouldn't want to have to take matters into my own hands. That could get very messy. For everyone. What are you doing, Jeff? It's funny, I was just about to ask you the same thing. This isn't your concern. You're my partner. Everything you do concerns me. I can handle this myself. Can you? It sure doesn't look that way to me. Look, right now, I, I just want, I need you to leave me alone, please. I'm asking you as my partner to please, just leave me the hell alone. me? What? I've left three messages. How about lunch? Do you want to grab a drink after your shift? No answer. I'm sorry. You know how it is. No, I don't. 
I've been busy. A lot of paperwork. What's going on, Phyllis? Oh, uh, apart from my divorce, the custody hearing, dealing with scum like Billy Sullivan, nothing much. Is there anything that you'd like to talk about? Are you asking me as a friend, or am I going to get your professional opinion? How about somewhere in the middle? We'll have lunch next week. Yeah, we'll do that. Margaret, I'm not shutting you out. I'm just trying to protect you. From what? Things you don't want to know. foreign cars the engine died on me i'm walking around with fifty thousand illegal dollars you son of a bitch just bring it to my office i am not going anywhere near your office then how do you propose to get me my money simple billy you're gonna get another car and you're gonna call me when you're ready to do this got it i think you're angry with me phyllis you can think whatever you like just get the car Thursdays, I don't have class till second period. Oh. I thought you left for work. I forgot something. When did you start carrying a briefcase? That stuff will kill you. Soul being run over by a car. I'm sorry. I had to get out of there. I knew you'd move. You didn't know that I'd move fast enough. Look, it's almost over, Jeff. Yeah? I saw you talking to the captain. So? So, you've been following me. Did you tell him where I go, what I do for Sullivan? He 
You got a message. Some car dealer called. He said your loaner's in. You have an automobile troubles, Phil? Sean, did you take something from my room? Hey, it's Sean. You know what to do. Sean is in right now? Oh, yeah. He's in Mr. Connor's math class, room 204. But wait, he's not there. Why not? I don't know. He didn't come to school today. Do you have any idea where he might have gone? Uh, no. Sorry. OK. Is anything wrong? No, no, no. Everything's fine. It's just that Sean's been acting a little weird at school lately. Weird. Yeah, like, kind of depressed, you know? I tried to talk to him about it, but just didn't want to talk. You just tell him to call me. Yeah, I will. Weber Cleaners, how can I help you? Annie, it's Phyllis. Is Steven there? Oh, hi, Mrs. Weber. No, I'm sorry he's not here. Do you have any idea where he went? What kind of mother would you characterize Mrs. Weber being? I don't know. How long have the two of you been partners? Almost four years. And in that time, you must have formed an opinion. We work together and socialize. Did she speak of her son? A little bit here and there. What are you doing here, Phyllis? We're in the middle of a deposition. Do you know where Sean is? He's supposed to be in school. He isn't. And obviously, you don't know where he is, which only adds fuel to my argument that she can't be trusted to watch over our son. Mrs. Weber, as your attorney, I advise you not to say anything more. Sean? No, it's me. I'm getting tired of waiting for you. Something's come up. I want my money. Later, you'll get it later. Yeah, well, later doesn't work for me. Now, you listen to me, you bitch. I swear, I must have What's said. going on, Phyllis? And what's happening with Sean? Nothing. Nothing's happening. I just need to talk to him. Are you fighting with him? Is that why he called me? When did he call you? This morning. He said he wanted to come over to the shop and talk to me about something. I said I'd meet him there after we're finished. Phyllis, what the hell is this about? I'll talk to you later. The woman is completely unstable. Did you get all that? Where are you going? After my partner. We're not through here, detective. And unless you want to come back on your next day off, I suggest you sit back down. School, and then her husband's divorce lawyer. She's bouncing around like a pinball. You know what? Stay with her. I want to know where she's going next.
Weber Cleaners, how can I help you? Annie, it's Phyllis again. Is Sean there? Sean, your son, Sean? No. Annie, this is important. If he shows up, just keep him there for me, okay? Don't tell him why, and, and whatever you do, don't tell him I called you. Just, just keep him in the store. Okay, Mrs. Weber. Bye. <laughs> What the hell is with all the dragnet crap, Jeff? Walk toward me, please, and keep both hands in front of you. Why are you doing this? I want you to tell me what's going on, and I don't want you to try to run me over with your car again. I'm trying to find my son. Why? What's happened to him? I don't know. Maybe nothing. Phil, please! Don't move. Jeff, I can't tell you anything, OK? Not yet. And you've got a problem, Phil. Because until I know what this is all about, you're not going anywhere. She's got company. Her partner just pulled her over. Looks like they're arguing about something. What are you gonna do, Jeff? Shoot me? If I have to. What? It's a setup. What? The whole thing! I'm clean! Taking your car. They're both getting into the car. Looks like they're going someplace in a hurry. She's got the case. Where does she think she's going with my money? They're heading west on O'Farrell. Don't let him out of your sight. I'm on myself. You were undercover. It's all supposed to be over today. I have enough on Sullivan and his operation to bring the whole damn thing down. So, you let Sullivan think he maneuvered you into working for him? What, whose idea was that? Actually, I saw it in an old Bogart movie, but I pitched it to the captain and he went for it. Why didn't you tell me, Phil? I... You wanted me to think you were dirty. I wanted everyone to think that. That's my insurance policy. I didn't know if Sullivan had someone in the department on the payroll. Until you aimed your gun at me. I wasn't even sure I could trust you. So what's in the briefcase? There's supposed to be about $57,000. Wait, supposed to be? Sean found the case in my closet. There was also a disc in there that has the names of everyone I've collected money from and how much. I put a passcode on it, but if he figured it out, he's probably now thinking that Mummy is a bad cop. Yeah, and if Sullivan finds out Sean's got the money... We have to get to him first. Let's break some laws. Is my dad here yet? Your dad? No. No, not yet. Uh, Sean, Sean, I, um, uh, I need some help with some boxes in the back. Can you give me a trip? Sure. Are you in on this, too? If you just listen to me for a minute. Like I'm supposed to believe you. Uh, 
Wow. <laughs> Five o'clock already. Um, I gotta go. Tell Mr. Weber I'll see him in the morning. I don't have time for this right now, Sean. You have to tell me, where is the money? No, sir, they're still inside. She has the case. I'm tired of playing nice. You know what you have to do. What about the kids, sir? Collateral damage, Lester. I want this cleaned up now. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, Jeff, take him to the house. Stay with him until I get home. I'm not leaving you. I have to do this alone. Sullivan's already suspicious. Okay. Wait a minute. So you're not a crook? You're, you're not working for the Sullivan guy? No, but it's very important that he thinks I am. The sooner I get this back to him, the sooner this job is done, and I can get this to the DA. Pretty lame code, Mom. I cracked it on my game player. Everybody's a critic. Ah! Ah! Get down! Bleeding a lot. Here. Sean. Sean! Hold this. Hold a lot of pressure on it. Just keep it tight. Okay? Is, is he gonna be okay? Just hold it there. This is Inspector Phyllis Weber, SFPD. Officer down. Officer needs assistance. 4316 Marina View Drive. Approach with caution. Suspect is armed and dangerous. No, I can't stay on the line. Just move your butt and send me some cars. It's Lester. Sullivan knows where we are. Can you move? The bullet's still in there. We gotta get you to the hospital. It's okay, baby. We're gonna be okay. Just pretend we're in one of your games. This isn't a game. Where are you, Billy? On my way to see you. If you have something that belongs to me, I want it. I've got backup on the way. Call off your dog and turn yourself in. You're in no position to negotiate, Phil. Now, either you give me my money or Lester out there is going to come in and get it. And I told him I don't particularly care if you're alive when he does. You your partner or your kid. It's your choice, it's up to you. Tick-tock, Phyllis. I'm getting tired of this. You know I'm gonna get my money one way or the other. Okay, Billy. I'm coming out. We don't hear sirens. We don't know when they're coming. If anything happens, you go to the back door and you run. Do you hear me? No. Do you understand? I think it's stuck. What did you do? Shut up. What makes you so afraid of him? You'll do anything he tells you to. I said shut up. Don't move, you 
son of a bitch. Stay. Jeff, what are you doing? Let's get you to the hospital. Where the hell is the damn backup? Wait. So, the money. It does. It's okay, Mom, I got him. Gosh, you're hurting my feelings, Phil. I thought we really had something. Gun? The other gun? Turn around. Now, let's see what's in that bag that's so important. Open it. bitch now. My mom's a good police officer. She's an honest one. For a while, I kind of misjudged her, you know? And I hurt her. And I'm really sorry about that. I always thought my mom's job must have been a lot of fun. The guns, the bad guys. But the other day, 
I got to see it close up. And it scared the crap out of me. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, the thing is, I realized something. My mom's job isn't fun, but it's important to her and to everybody else. So the thing is, I don't want her to have to choose between being a cop and being my mom. I kind of want to make it a little easier for her. And I think the way to do that is to live with my dad. All right. Well, are there any objections? No, Your Honor. Very well. Thank you very much, Sean. You may step down now. And this court is adjourned. Okay. I am so proud of you. I'm still gonna get those home cooked meals, right? You try and stop me. <laughs> hey, look, ice cream. You want some? You go ahead, I'll catch up. Okay. <clears throat> Congratulations, Stephen. You won. I only did what I thought was best for Sean. I know. I guess, uh, I guess we still have a few things that we need to work out. That is, if you even want to talk to me after all this. We do have something pretty spectacular in common. That we do. But it's going to be a long road. Dinner. How about ice cream?